All right, so I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, Nozick's experience machine. So just to begin, let's read some passages where Nozick explains his experience machine. So here are these passages. Um, what matters other than how people experience experiences feel from the inside? Suppose there were an experience machine that could give you any experience you desired. Super duper neuropsychologists could stimulate your brain so that you would think and feel you were writing a great novel or making a friend or reading a great book. All the time you would be floating in a tank with electrodes connected, connected to your brain. Should you plug into this machine for life, pre-programming your life's experiences? If you're worried about missing out on desirable experiences, we can suppose that business enterprises have researched thoroughly the lives of many others. You can pick and choose from their large library of or smorgasbord of such experiences, selecting your life's experiences for, say, the next two years. A after two years have passed, you'll have 10 minutes or 10 hours out of the tank to select experiences for the next two years. Of course, while you're in the tank, you won't know that you're there. You'll think it's all actually happening. Others can also plug in and have these experiences they want. Uh, there's no need to stay unplugged to serve up them. Ignore problems such as who will service the ex machines if everyone plugs in. Uh, would you plug in? What else can matter to us other than how our lives feel from the inside? Nor should you refrain because of the few moments of distress between the moment you've decided and the moment you've plugged in. What's a few moments of distress compared to a lifetime of bliss, if that's what you choose? And why feel any distress if your decision is the best one. And this is an excerpt from Anarchy, State, and Utopia, Robert Nozick, 1974. So Nozick's question is, would you plug in? If, if you can program this matrix machine to give you a simulated life where you succeed at friendships, succeed at mountain climbing, succeed at writing poetry, etc., 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 and and if you, while you're in the machine, you will forget that you've programmed it. You'll forget that you're in a simulation and we'll take you out every two years so you can self-correct. You know, maybe you're unsure that you can program correctly for your whole life. So you need checkpoints to pull out and redirect and then go back in and then live this life um, not knowing that you're in a simulation. Is that the best life? Is that is that what we want? Is that the ideal the pinnacle of human life, that being able to create a machine like this and being able to plug into it? So that's what Nozick's asking. John Rawls has a similar version of this sort of question, although it doesn't involve a sci-fi example of an experience machine. He used to tell this story in his classes. A man is going... I mean, I guess it's a little fantasy as opposed to sci-fi. A man is going away to fight in a war in which he may possibly die. Let's say he's certain to die. The night before he leaves, the devil comes and offers him a choice. Either while he's away, his family will thrive and flourish, but he will get word that they are suffering and miserable. But while he's away, his family will suffer, or while he's away, his family will suffer and be miserable, but he will get word that they are thriving and happy. He must choose now, and of course he will not, he'll be made to forget that this conversation with the devil ever happened and the choice it resulted ever took place. But he has a choice here. What matters to him? Does he care that his family actually be happy and succeed and thrive? Or does he only care about his own experiences of thinking they're thriving and they're happy? Because if all he cares is about the mental experience, he'll pick the choice of his family suffering and being miserable but him getting word that they're great and happy. If it's not just the mental state that we're pursuing of happiness and satisfaction, the mental state of thinking that our loved ones are doing well, but them actually doing well, then he's going to choose getting word that they're miserable and him suffering because he's getting word that they're miserable and distraught about that, but at the payoff that unknowingly to him dis Despite the, all the terrible mental states that are going on in his head, they're actually doing well. And that's because he, that's what he actually cares about. 
when he makes his deal with the devil. So this is similar. What would you opt for in the Rawls case is very similar to the experience machine. What do we really care about? Do we care about just the mental state of all of our wishes being fulfilled, all of our loved ones doing well, about all of our satisfactions being satisfied, about our happiness? All, all we're trying to do is make us have the experience of that? Or is it that we're willing to trade misery up here in the mental states in order to make sure that it's objectively accomplished in the world, which shows that what we care about is that our goals and desires and values, our preferences are actually accomplished in the world. And it's not just about mental state satisfaction, mental pleasure. Nozick correctly assumes that most, but not all of us would plug in to his, would, would, wouldn't plug in, sorry, that we, most of us would not, not plug into his experience machine. We would refuse. In my courses, about two or three people out of every 30 are willing to plug in. The rest think, at least claim that they wouldn't. For those who wouldn't plug in, what does this reveal about their preferences and values? Uh, for those who wouldn't opt to plug in, it seems to show that these people value their preferences actually objectively being fulfilled and not merely the subjective experience of thinking that their preferences are fulfilled. Nozick's experience machine isn't meant to reveal what we should or shouldn't value. It doesn't, for example, say that people who do plug in are wrong. What Nozick's thought experiment shows is that is something about most of us, i.e. the people who refuse to plug in. Namely, it reveals to us that what we really care about is our preferences to be objectively fulfilled and not merely that we have subjective experiences of thinking that our preferences are fulfilled. How does this connect to virtue ethics? Well, for most of us, our aim is to lead a good life. That aim is not merely to live a life filled with subjective happiness and the experience of satisfaction as the ethical egoist claims it to be, but objectively to have our life projects fulfilled and our loved ones taken care of and to be the person who contributes to both through our actions and succeeds because of our character and who we are. We care about this objective goodness and not just subjective experiences. That's what refusing to plug into Nozick's experience machine shows and that contributes to the virtue ethicist opposition to the ethical egoist. Uh, there's a final question which I think is related to all of this. If you don't plug into the experience machine, it seems like you could be harmed or benefited after you die because you know whether your preferences and values are fulfilled, whether what you really care about is accomplished and done for you, isn't just whether you feel it or know about it or are satisfied, but whether it actually happens in the world. And so that means that you could be harmed or benefited after you die. I mean, ethical egoists generally don't think that's true, right? Once you're dead, you can't find out that your novel was published or that your kids are doing well or that your life's work is being pursued or that you've become famous as you pursued your whole life after you die. You know, it's just... For the ethical egoist, it's just the mental state. So once you're dead and there are no more mental states, there's nothing that can be done to benefit you. Whereas if we take the sort of I'm not going to plug into the experience machine perspective and we think that people's the thing that people care about is not just the mental experience, but things actually being fulfilled in the world, the objective satisfaction of their desires and the objective objective fulfillment of their values. Well, then there's no reason to think that death is a barrier to that being fulfilled. You can have your goals, your values, your pursuits followed through on even after you die and then be benefited uh, after you die.